Hello, good afternoon. My name is Darian Jones. I'm the Caregiver Education and Digital Specialist at Care Partners. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're bringing you another Hot Topic Live segment and we have a really, really great speaker today. Um, Lisa Milliken is gonna be talking to us about just the importance of caring for yourself so that you're able in turn to better take care of the one, your loved one. Um, before we get into the Hot Topic today, I just have a couple of quick announcements. Um, we have an upcoming caregiver conference on August 29th. It's an online caregiver conference. Um, and what's really cool is that even if you can't attend the event, you can register and sign up for all the presentations that you wanna see, and then we'll send you a replay. So I put that address on this banner below, and we would love um, for you guys to, or for everyone at home to uh, check it out and see if there's anything that interests you. We'd love to be able to provide this different type of online education. Um, and in other news, we're also still offering the Common Ground Support Group. You can find information on our website. Uh, we're doing that twice a week now, and we're also offering a, um, a wide variety of gathering place um, programs now. You, the most, the most, or one of our newest ones <laughs> is Gathering at Your Place, which is online via Zoom, and you can just give us a call at our offices, and we will give you the information on how to join. So there is a password now because of security. So. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys and um, just everyone at home and see what you guys are doing at home. So if you want to email us at info at carepartnerstexas.org, we'd love to hear from you. Um, with that, I think we will go ahead and get started with the topic today. And I'm going to introduce our speaker, uh, Lisa Milliken. How are you today? I'm good. How are you, Darian? I'm great. Um, I'm really looking forward to this topic. And then um, also, as I mentioned, you're going to be one of the featured speakers at our upcoming caregiver conference. And so that was another thing we really wanted to get you in here to maybe give us a little preview of what you're talking about or just kind of show who you are so that we can learn a little bit more about you. Um, so with that, I'm just going to hand it over to you. Great. Okay. So exactly what Darian just said, to tell you a little bit about me, I live here in Houston. I've worked in the long-term care environment for over 30 years, operations, clinical, but working with a lot of families. I've been a caregiver myself. And just for the last few years, I've really um, been asked to talk about this topic a lot, um, especially how to deal with burnout, how to deal with stress, how to manage stress. If you're the caregiver, if you're the professional nurse or physician, if you are the client, the patient, the um, person who needs care yourself. So that topic is going to be coming up at the conference and I'm there's going to be three speakers. I'm the third one and I'll be tying it up um, the speaker part with a 45 minute session on caring for the caregiver. Um, and then we'll have a panel discussion where we can all answer lots of your specific questions. But I'm gonna give you just a little snapshot of what that is. So the, um, the whole focus is that the best thing you can do for your loved one, it, whether it's your parent, your child, your spouse, your brother, sister, somebody you're caring for, the best thing you can do for them is to take care of yourself. And that sounds, and I think we all have thought at some point that would be selfish. I can't take care of myself. They need me. But it's exactly because they need you of why you need to take care of yourself. So think about it is if you miss your doctor's appointments or you just don't make them because you don't have time, if you're not sleeping, if you're not getting nutrition, you're managing to get a little food in here or there, but it's not nutritious you're not drinking enough water, you're not getting hydrated, you get to the point where you're running on empty. And what happens to us when we run on empty is we crash, we burn out, we suddenly get the flu, we're hospitalized, or we even die. So then we're not gonna be there for our loved one if that happens. I'm gonna use the analogy of if you board a plane, if you or I boarded a plane with our loved one that we're focusing on them, and if we lost oxygen in the cabin, we would be told, and we're, we're uh, told about this at the beginning, you know, if, if for some reason, blah, 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 and sometimes we tune it out, we don't listen, we keep reading our book or responding to a text before we take off. But the rules are, if anything happens that we lose pressure in the cabin, we need to first 
put on our mask really quick and then take care of our loved one. We need to spend time with them, but we can get our mask on super fast. Now, what happens if, if our mindset, because it's all about them, is to hurry up and get their oxygen mask on first and eventually we'll take care of ourselves. We could spend up to 30 seconds a minute trying to get it on their head and then we're going to pass out. We're not going to be there for them. We could even die. If we would have taken 10 seconds to quickly get it on ourselves, then we can make it all about them and take care of the loved one. And it's then that we are equipped to take care of them for the rest of their lives through that flight, through those few minutes of turbulence or whatever, and thereafter. So we're going to talk for just a few minutes of how we can equip ourselves to better care for the person that we're taking care of. So it's interesting what I want to start with. Um, and it's a word that I did not understand until about a year ago when I started studying this word intensely. And that word is resilience. And I used to think to be resilient, and maybe you have thought this at some point too, maybe you have a total um, understanding of what that word means already. But I used to think it meant get over it, move forward, push on, don't um, let this bother you, just stand up, shake it off and keep going. And that is so unrealistic. It's not what that means at all. And we definitely don't want to pretend this is not happening and just forget about things that need to be focused on. So I'm going to give you three things that we can do to be more resilient. And then I'll move on into the other things we can do to care for ourselves. And this is according to Lucy Hone. She uh, researched this for years and years. It was her specialty as a researcher, researching resiliency and what people should do. And then she had a tragedy happen in her own life where she lost her, I think, 11 or 12 year old daughter in a tragic accident, as well as her best friend and her best friend's daughter. And she started seeing what things that I've studied all of my life help and what don't, what doesn't help. And she said three things helped her to not become the basket case that can only see the negative and grief for the rest of her life, but to focus on the rest of her family her other child, her husband, and other things that she had to find joy and purpose in in her life. And those three things is number one, so kind of jot these down, or, or we'll talk about them later in the conference, is realize, know that bad things happen to everyone. And adversity does not discriminate. It happens to everyone of every socioeconomic class, of every, every country, every race, every age. And if you think that everybody else is having this great positive life and you're the only one who doesn't, <laughs> what really we find out is other people have other crises going on in their lives as well. They just don't share it. They don't put that on Facebook. You know, they just, they only share what's great happening. Um, all of us, by, probably by the time we're 30, have gone through something pretty bad, pretty major. And then we will continue going through things. But it's how we deal with that that makes a big difference. So bad things happen to all of us. And we don't want to get into this. Why did this happen to me? And why am I in this situation? But just realize that is a given. It's just a part of being human. But the second thing, and it starts getting real interesting on the second and the third thing. The second thing is to choose carefully what you are going to allow your brain to think about um, where you're going to focus your attention. So it turns out that negative emotions stick to us and it's human nature to only think about or, or to make ourselves think about what if this happened? What's the worst case scenario? Um, just the worst situation and it's the literature refers it to research refers to it as potential threats and that's just where our brain wants to go and that's sort of a protective mechanism to make sure those things don't actually happen but we we can easily dwell on it lucy holmes said in her writings that negative thoughts stick to us like velcro versus positive thoughts tend to just naturally unless we change our mindset. Positive thoughts tend to bounce off of us like Teflon. <laughs> it just, they just go away unless 
we choose to focus on the positive. So um, a couple things about that number two is decide where you're going to keep your attention. One is a study of people with high amounts of depression and or anxiety, mostly depression in this particular study, found that if they made themselves focus, write down three things that happened today that were good. And it could be I woke up this morning, you know, it can be um, I got through the day without crying. It could be um, I got to see a loved one. It could be I, I had a great conversation with somebody on the phone or it can be something more major. But just write down three things. You know, the sun was shining today and it's been raining other day or I'm glad it's raining because we need some rain, um, you know, on our yard and plants or whatever. So write down three things. And when in the study where people wrote down three things that was good that day, even if you have to, it's a stretch for how to find those three things. It actually changed um, their their brain structure and decreased the depression um, and or anxiety if that's that was their issue. And that is called in research benefit finding. And so we focus on what's good. We make ourselves write it down. And at the end of the day, if we can't remember. We can go back and read what we wrote. That's the second thing. And the third thing is to ask yourself, is this action or this thought um, helping me or is it hurting me? So if if you find yourself and it's so easy, it's kind of like number the second thing to dig ourselves deep into this well of, of um, what if this happens? What if that happens? You know, so that's number two focus, you know, choose where you're going to put your attention but number three is if we find ourselves doing something repetitively that is not healthy, is this helping me? No, actually it's not. Like looking at pictures of, a, of a, someone who's passed away in your life and wishing they were still here and dwelling on that. Or looking at pictures of when life was better before this crisis or before I'm in this situation. Or um, just focusing on these negative thoughts that's not good for me. What else could I do? Other negative thoughts or not other actions that are negative could be if we find ourselves arguing with someone who has dementia or cognitive loss or someone who's older who doesn't understand what we're trying to. Now, I'm not saying that older people don't understand. I hate when people think that because just because you're old, you don't understand something. But I have cared for people who is over 90 and over 100 who is not aware that a certain um thing may be helpful to them. And yet they have wisdom beyond, way beyond my years of what they understand. Um, but if they have a cognitive loss, if they can't um, hear or see, and, and so maybe some of their senses aren't working, it, it's not going to help me to argue with anyone, especially if they have dementia or have had a neurological um, progressive loss or something. So that's not helping, right? Is it hurting? Yes, it is. Other things that could be not helping but hurting us is to eat or drink something that we think may make us feel good for the moment, but in the long run, it's detrimental to our health. It's not good at all. Um, so what could we replace those with? Um, another one is spending hours on social media. Thinking, oh, look at all these other people's perfect lives. They're not perfect. They're just not sharing with you what's not so good. You know, some people you think they have perfect kids and perfect parents and they live in this perfect house. They're just not telling you all the mess that's going on in their life. And don't focus on spending all of your time doing that. So what could you replace that with? And, and this is the last thing I want to talk about. Um, number one, you can replace it with something positive like going for a walk um, or hiring somebody or convincing a friend or taking a friend up on their offer to come sit with your loved one just for two hours once a week. It could be a weekend when they're off. It could be a weeknight where you go do something that you enjoy guilt-free. And that could be to take a yoga class, to take a painting class, to go on a bike ride with a friend, to uh, go get your nails done, to go get a massage, to go take a nap. <laughs> to go shopping, whatever you enjoy for two hours, um, that is a positive thing. It could also be, and I want to really stress this, and I'll stre I've will said it before and I'll say it again, um, based on uh, the studies, what we talked about before, focus on writing 
instead of the negative things like eating or drinking something bad or looking at the wrong thing or spending time dwelling on something that, you know, what if instead focus on writing in a journal um, things I'm grateful for. And this is one of my best strategies. And that can be, um, you know, I literally, all of us, you and I, we all have probably a hundred things we could write down in a few minutes of what's not going so well right now. But we could also, once we start our list, okay, what am I grateful for? Okay, I woke up this morning, I'm alive. Uh, my child is alive. My husband is alive. <laughs> you know, can start with things like that. I have a place to live. I have food to eat. And so we start with the basics. And then you start thinking about friendships I'm thankful for. And you start to think about all the other little things. And once you get going, it's a very positive experience and it can shift your mindset. Okay, so on that third note, focus on things that are, are positive and healthy for you. I want to run into a few things and then we're going to wrap up that I'm going to spend a lot more time on in the upcoming Empowering Caregiver Conference. And that's things that are good for your health. And that includes things like make those doctor's appointments and keep them. Make sure you get good nutrition every day. And that starts with making sure you buy the right things at the grocery store so they're in your refrigerator that's nutritious and healthy. It's amazing how eating nutritious food can just make you feel better. You know, like when you eat an orange or when you eat a good salad, um, you hydrate, you get a lot of water in that day, maybe take a multivitamin. And there's some, some interesting studies on vitamins, and we can talk about that later at the next conference, like omega-3. If you don't get enough omega-3 in your diet, you could have um, anxiety. If there's certain food anxieties in your life, that could add to your anxiety. So just good nutrition, very important in, in hydration. Another thing is meditation every day. Spend a few minutes in prayer or meditation or quiet time, whichever one helps you, whichever one you feel like is more you and, and is doable for you, make that happen, even if it's 10 minutes a day. And that could be five minutes in the morning and five minutes at night where you just shut everything down and you focus on praying for a few minutes. And that could be, dear Lord, here's what I'm thankful for and here's where I need your help. Or meditation, and that just involves breathing and focusing on your breath. And there's apps you can use for meditation or just quiet time where you're just, and that's kind of like meditation where you're focusing on your breath and pushing out all the negative thoughts and just having some alone time to yourself. Um, maybe playing a little bit of music in the background or completely quiet, whatever works for you. That can change your brain. And I've got a lot of studies on that as well. Um, and then getting enough sleep. So this is my kind of my new thing. I have a watch that monitors my sleep. A lot of you probably do too. A lot of people make a watch where you can look at how much many hours you slept at night. And you may have been in bed for eight hours, but you find out you only slept for five and um, how much of that was tossing and turning. Focus on things that help you sleep better at night and gives you more quality sleep. And this could include turning off all electronic devices an hour or two before you go to bed. Make sure you get some exercise, even if it's walking around the house or up and down the stairs earlier in the day, not a few hours before you sleep, so you bring that down. Taking a bath or shower at night, a warm shower or bath, um, lavender smells. There's all kinds of things you can do and you can research it. Just reading a book before you go to bed instead of your phone or something with a screen, so sleep is important. Finally, we've talked about journaling. The last couple of things is spend some time, find time to talk to friends and pick those friends who are positive, who will be a good listener and remind you of something good and funny. And then laughter, you know, you can get that from talking to your friend that makes you laugh or sends you funny things. Looking at a video, um, there's YouTube videos, there's, um, cartoons there's I, I love the different cat videos for instance some people love those um there's all kinds of things an old movie that makes you laugh or thinking about your favorite funny movie uh, seek sources of laughter and then find the music that you love and spend some time listening to that music even if it's walk your few minutes you've got to clean the house or wash the dishes or 
care for someone, just turn on the music that brings you joy. And that is different for every person. So that's a few quick things that I wanted to share. We'll talk a lot more about all of those in our upcoming conference. And I'll turn it back over to Darian. Hello. <clears throat> Hello. I'm not sure what that noise was. Sorry about that. Um, thank you so much, Lisa, for taking the time. It's always a pleasure to have you. Um, be here and share with us. And I highly recommend that everyone watching go check out the Empowering the Caregiver Conference where Lisa's gonna go and spend a lot more time on all of these topics and more. Um, and it's gonna be a really just an overall really great conference. So I highly recommend. Um, and with that, uh, I think we're gonna end it for today, but uh, just thank you so much, Lisa. And I will see you soon. And everyone at home again, just check out this online conference and our website, carepartnerstexas.org, for some other online resources.